Uh, hi, my name is Isabella Bogdanovich, and uh, I will be sharing some uh, technology tips and tricks that I have found useful in the past. You're looking at my trusty technology team, my computer and my iPad paired with the pencil. And before I jump in, I'm just going to say a couple of words um, about myself. So uh, I'm an artist uh, living and working in the Okanagan. I specialize in painting still lives. And on the other side, I'm also an IT entrepreneur. And that being said, the tips and tricks I'm going to share today are not going to be overly complicated. Uh, first up, uh, we're going to start with some uh, Procreate um, color uh, pickers. So Procreate is software that works on iPad and it, they don't have an Android version. Uh, so, but there's some other options that I will I'll show you for Android tablets uh, or Windows computers. So um, this is appropriate. So I have uh, imported a photograph and I'm going to start sampling the colors um, from that silverware that is so wonderfully stained. Uh, and so you see me just, it's such a wonderful tool that uh, color picker you just press and hold. So it is really very simple and um, you just press and hold and just, you know, make a mark to make like a little color swatch for your reference. Uh, so it helps to isolate the color and see it against the white background because then uh, it sort of shows its real value when it's out of the picture, sort of. It's easier to see it. It, I mean, this works like a, like a, um, like those um, view catchers, and they have those little holes uh, with the gray background, so you can just see that particular spot, you know, up, you know, away from other co colors because it will they influence the way you see colors. So this is basically it. Like it's a. If you're working from photographs, uh, this is um, a really good solution for you. So you would have your uh, reference photo and the color uh, swatches just next to it. So you can refer to it while you're painting. And here you see the teacup uh, and those variations and you know the the colors that you know, of the shadow are so shockingly dark <laughs> and you know and the the teacup itself is not so light as well I'm turning my attention now to lilacs they have some areas that are so dark that seem black. They're really, really dark purple. And there's a huge difference between a black and a really dark purple. Like, a value-wise, uh, it may be just a slight, maybe 1% or 2 difference. But the visual impact of, uh, of using a deep or really, really dark... Uh, purple or any other color in a different situation uh, compared to black is is huge and so this is another example of me uh, just sampling colors from a photograph from a reference photo so that's the process I enlarged the canvas behind the photo so that I have some space to put those color swatches so just sample the the colors and you know make those little swatches and it's very simple so i, I try to be neat like you you can do this any way you can it's just you know more pleasing for me to have um a nice little puddles <laughs> around my uh, reference 
So I'm looking for the varieties here of that orange, dark. And um, it is interesting how uh, dark they are, actually. But they seem so bright. And such a tricky thing to, you know, to, uh, to notice. So if you're aiming to have realistic color in your uh, art, this is a really great way to go about it. And um, of course, uh, just sampling these colors is not enough uh, on its own. You need to uh, mix those colors with your own paints and pigments. So you need to be uh, very well acquainted. So I suggest you make the color charts. Uh, that may be time consuming, but um, I think it is a, a, a critical thing to have. Like you need to know uh, and what your colors can do together. Creating these color charts is uh, another topic altogether, uh, but I can tell you that it took me a week. So we're jumping in uh, another uh, software. Uh, so this is Adobe Fresco, as it says there. And uh, here I will show you exactly the same thing using uh, this other tool. So this one will work on a Windows computer, desktop computer, as well as in, on Android and iPad tablet. Okay, I placed this photograph on that canvas and I'm gonna start just using that eyedropper or, um, around and choosing colors, making swatches, just as I did before. But, you know, you will see just a different uh, workflow here, but basically it's the same. And uh, this software has amazing water brushes so uh, I've, I've been testing it. I just um, found it a month ago and um, was blown away by their uh, watercolor brushes and you know how natural they feel. So I'm not uh, doing a lot of watercolors in my life, but this was really enjoyable. So I suggest you try it. The software is free and they have a premium version uh, that has uh, some extra brushes, but I don't know, I enjoyed even these free ones and would recommend you to try it out since they're really nice. I mean, especially if you have a pencil with your tablet, so you don't have to work with a mouse, but you know, these color swatching uh, things, you can do that with a mouse with no problem. So I, I was overriding the coloring that I found. I did not like it, so I decided to make it less black and more saturated. And you will see me do that uh, in, a, in a, another part where I really push those colors uh, to make it more interesting for me. So I'm just exporting this image that I will later be able to use as a reference for my work. So we're going to Fresco again, and I'm going to show you those water brushes, watercolor brushes. And you have uh, controls for the amount of water that's going to flow. And of course, the, the size of the brush <laughs> and the water flow and I don't know if there's anything else there, but I, you know, I was blown away by how that water was moving and mixing on the on the canvas there. So I'm just gonna show, give you a really short uh, preview of that feature. You 
can see me here changing the water flow and choosing a, a bit more of a dry brush. So you can see there's less of a, a color movement on the screen. In this next segment, I will be uh, cropping the picture, the photograph to the correct uh, proportion that my <clears throat> painting surface is. So that will be in this situation a square. So I'm making a square composition using just the basic editing tool uh, on my tablet. Sometimes when I'm working on a larger painting, uh, I have uh, problems seeing the entirety of the composition while standing at an arm's length from my uh, painting surface. So uh, I use grids to help me segment the painting into workable uh, areas that I can see completely. So uh, there is an app, app called Grid uh, uh, that I use to um, really quickly superimpose a grid over the reference photo. So you'll see me looking for a photograph <laughs> that just cropped. Oops, wrong one. Um, so I will find it. Okay, so this is a photograph that I just cropped to square and so you see you can you can edit those grids to your liking. Uh, even the, the, the color and the, the the thickness of the lines. Uh, so you uh, go ahead and save that image with a grid and it will appear in, in your in your um, album. As you see, that's a reference photo with workable areas. So this next movie is showing, so this is a work in progress. And uh, uh, so at this stage, I wanted to test some ideas for the wall uh, behind my subject and you know add some other uh, shapes that I need so uh, I'm trying out some art <laughs> so that is supposed to be a door So that would be a lamp. I'm using a software Procreate uh, for this part. So that's the software that works on iPads. You can easily just, just as well use another software or any software because the brush feature is a basic one and um, I think most uh, photo editing um, tools have a brush. So this is really a very basic, just a value um, with no color added, just to test the composition and do not and not uh, change the painting itself, as testing on the painting would cause a lot of unnecessary work. So this painting is still a work in progress, but I just wanted to uh, show you that I did implement the edits I made in Procreate. Next, uh, we will see uh, how I made some reference photo edits. So I did make, did make an, a reference photo and uh, at the moment, at the time, I did not mind the tape, uh, but you know, once you look at the reference photo for hours 
uh, you it's it's preferable that you know you don't have distracting white tape or you know white lines in your uh, reference photo so i'm just showing how i just use the color picker to sample the color from the photograph and um, so it's not perfect and and i just covered with the brush basically colored those areas of white tape it's not perfect but it's way better than the white tape Once I started editing, I decided to remove that uh, line along the background as well. So you'll see this uh, photo will be much easier to is look at uh, now, even with these really basic uh, improvements. It's much nicer to work from this photo than the previous one with the tape. The resulting image with the tape edited out is much more pleasant to look at for prolonged periods of time. In this segment, I'll be showing you how I usually go about choosing colors of my frames. So I'll be just um, choosing a really simple frame design here and um, I, I like to uh, enlarge the area just to mimic the wall so you get the feeling you know, of a painting uh, and the background wall. So yeah, it, it helps to put things in context and people usually have white walls or I mean light colored walls I'm looking for a, a right thickness of line uh, for my uh, frame so uh, this the the width of a stroke uh, that I'm using here is is matching the the frame so uh, it would be relevant. I'm doing my best to be as neat as possible. I mean, this is not an image that you will be uh, showing. It's just for your internal use, just like the the rough sketching to determine your composition. But um, frames are usually very uh, straight lined and it's part of their uh, design. So it does help to be as neat and tidy as possible to get the right feel of the, the entire design together. In Procreate it's really easy to uh, color uh, a layer. So uh, if you have a frame on a separate layer, you can really easily change these colors as you can see. 
Uh, so we get really instant solutions for your frame colors. As you can see, this is quite effortless. You can see I have uh, predefined frames colors there, so I made color swatches of the of the colors I have at the moment. So uh, I'm just you know playing with color for you, but you know those are the the ones I would be testing, and this is the one that I actually chose for this particular painting. Uh, in this next segment, I'm working in Photoshop on my computer and uh, the goal of this uh, video will be to show you how I um, get creative <laughs> uh, with colors. So I like to make my uh, shadows and highlights colorful. So uh, I will be just sampling some colors from that shade and, you know, trying to make it more alive uh, because uh, I find shades very inspiring. They often have such beautiful shapes and I really like to pay attention to, uh, to them uh, since they're often overlooked and they're also 2D, just like paintings. So I feel they should be friends, like paintings and shades. And shades in a painting can come alive as they're both 2D. And it can happen with the use of color. So all you need to do is practice using more saturated colors uh, to give shades some life. You can do all this also in Procreate in, or um, in the other software I uh, showed, the uh, Adobe Fresco. So, um, I don't know, I just felt um, I should show that all this is possible as well in Photoshop. Uh, so, if you, you're using a com desktop computer and are familiar with Photoshop, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool. And so many options here, and that's why it may be overwhelming for some people. And uh, that's actually the reason why I uh, was showing you mostly Procreate and Adobe Fresco, that they're really simple and not at all intimidating. To learn Procreate, you just go to their website and they have an online instruction manual, sort of, and you can go through it in a matter of, um, I don't know, half an hour, an hour tops, and you don't have to know everything, uh, but it's useful, uh, so you may find it entertaining. But those basic features, uh, I guess a couple of minutes uh, would be enough for you to master. So I'm also experimenting uh, with the colors for my uh, highlights uh, because I like those to have uh, variations as well. In this last video, I want to show you uh, how I use a perspective crop tool in Photoshop to correct the perspective of on my photos uh, and you can see so if this was a finished artwork that I wanted to submit um, for an art show and if it was a good photograph this one clearly is not but this is just a demonstration photograph and you can see the artwork is not rectangular in the picture it is trapezoid and this tool is gonna make it a perfect rectangle I hope you enjoyed this um, little selection uh, that I have compiled and thank you for watching.